Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day. Thank you for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White IV, the eldest son of Daniel White III. The intro music that you just heard is my late grandfather, Daniel White Jr., singing a song titled Get Ready. Today, my father, Daniel White III, is going to share with you news and information relating to biblical prophecy so that you can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books, including Just Jesus and The Prayer Motivator. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in 23 foreign countries, and is the president of Gospelite Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is report number 219. My name is Daniel White III, here to remind you that Jesus Christ is coming back soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions, nor is it about setting dates, as some foolishly have in the past. However, it is all about preparation. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus Christ in Matthew 24:3. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world as we know it. Looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, according to Assist News Service, an Iranian Assembly of God pastor and three ministers have each been sentenced to a year in prison for preaching Christianity. Their trial was held last month at the Revolutionary Court in Awaz, after their church was raided while members gathered to worship together. Mohabbat News, whose website is banned inside of Iran, reported the Revolutionary Court said the charges were converting to Christianity, inviting other Muslims to convert, as well as propagating against the Islamic regime through promoting evangelical Christianity. And that is the charge. The second today, according to the Times of Israel, Iranian Brigadier General Masoud Jazayiri said Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system is no match for Iranian missiles. He downplayed the effectiveness of the anti-missile system that is credited with destroying more than a hundred short-range rockets from the Gaza Strip. He told an Iranian news agency that there is no iron dome in the world that we cannot pierce through. Third, today, according to persecution.org, while several Christians have been jailed in Egypt in recent weeks for allegedly insulting Islam, no action has been taken against a Muslim sheikh who publicly burned the Bible. Coptic leader Camille Sadiq said that while freedom of speech should be protected, Egypt's double standard, which nearly always target uh, Christians, are an issue of grave concern. Last Sunday, five cops, COPTS, were injured in violent interface clashes near a church in the south of Cairo, which exploded when some Muslim extremists tried to prevent cops, COPTS, from going to 
mass. Sadiq called on President Morsi to prove that he is the president of all Egyptians through his deeds, not his words. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in 1 Peter 4.16, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. You can read these stories in more detail and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy, the second coming of Christ, and what will happen in the future. According to the Bible, the Word of God, our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Our topic for today is titled, Who is the Queen of Heaven? Part 1 from Dr. John MacArthur's fine book, The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nimrod, he says, was the brains behind the first system of false religion, but his wife, Queen Simaramis, is reputed to have been the foundress of the Babylonian mysteries and the first high priestess of idolatry. When Babel was scattered by God, the whole system revolving around Semiramis was also scattered. Now when the Medes and Persians destroyed Babylon, the high priests and priestesses of this highly detailed Semiramis mystery religion fled to Pergamus. Later on, when Rome came to power, Julius Caesar had all the priests and priestesses of Semiramis moved to Rome. He did this because he knew what every good conqueror knows, that uh, if he could combine a false religion with his political system, he would have a great deal more power over the people. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue to look at this topic in our next broadcast, If the Lord Tarries His Coming and We Live. In closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of His second coming. Jesus Christ said in Luke 19.13, To occupy till I come. What exactly does He mean by that statement? Uh, please listen to the following from J.C. Ryle about the meaning of this passage. Occupying faithfully is the way to promote readiness for the inheritance of the saints in light. There will be no idleness in the kingdom of Christ. The saints and angels shall there wait on their Lord with unwearied activity and serve him day and night. It is a fine saying of Bernard that Jacob in his vision saw some angels ascending and some descending, but none standing still. Occupy, occupy, I say again, if you would be thoroughly trained for your glorious home. O oh, brethren, believers, it would be well indeed if we did but see clearly how much it is for our interest and happiness to occupy every farthing of our Lord's money, to live every, to live very near to God. So living, we shall find great joy in our work, great comfort in our trials, great doors of usefulness in the world, great consolation in our sicknesses, great hope in our death, leave great evidences behind us when we are buried, have great confidence in the day of Christ's return, and receive a great crown in the day of reward. Brothers and sisters in Christ, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes J.C. Ryle's discussion of what it means to occupy until Christ comes. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, prepare our hearts, our souls, our spirits, and our minds for your second coming. 
And the Lord help us to live accordingly. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, if you are listening to this broadcast and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, God wants you to receive Jesus Christ before he returns. Please understand with me that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please also understand with me that because of your sins, you deserve, and I deserve, all of us sinners deserve, eternal punishment in hell. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. This is both physical death, we die physically and go to the grave, our soul goes to hell, uh, spiritual death. Now, that is bad news. But here is the good news. John 3.16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This verse is telling us that despite our sinfulness, God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to suffer and die on the cross for our sins. After he died on the cross, he was buried and rose again. Now all you have to do is believe in him, trust in him, and have faith in him for your salvation. If you do so, you will not suffer eternal punishment in hell, or rather, you will live eternally in heaven with God. The Bible says in Romans ten nine and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, dear friend, if you believe in your heart right now that Jesus Christ died for you, on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again. And you want to invite him into your heart today. Please pray with me this simple prayer and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some evil things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you prayed that prayer with me, and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, you are now saved and you're on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God. Congratulations on receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I assure you that you will never regret it. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to gospellightsociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Jesus Christ said in John 10:9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew twenty four forty two. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he said, Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. Remember, you can stay up to date with prophecy news and events on our website at secondcomingherald.com. If you would like to know more about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, what to do after salvation, or looking for a good church home, please visit gospelitesociety.com for more information. This radio broadcast can be heard daily on Live 365, bcnnradio7.com, gospelightworldradio.com, Buzzsprout, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, and can be downloaded from numerous outlets online. God bless, and until next time, keep looking up for your redemption draw if not.
Now here's a song that will encourage you as you await Christ's return. You got to get your business straight. 